Hello everyone, uh, this is Professor Khan checking in with you. I wanted to uh, talk to you just a little bit about your first paper assignment, paper number one. I just wanted to kind of go over the directions with you here in this brief presentation. Uh, I've emailed you the directions for paper one and those directions uh, will be up on Blackboard in Module 1 for your reference. Uh, but let's just kind of take a look at it together. And uh, I'll uh, just sort of go over the directions and sort of emphasize uh, certain ideas and maybe reword them a little bit in a way that I hope will be helpful for you. So paper one is actually going to be a very short paper. Um, it's not even really a full essay. Uh, the purpose of paper one is to see how well you can uh, put together a solid plot summary of a short story. That's the first task or the first goal. And Secondly, uh, we want to see how well you can compose a uh, statement of a story's central idea. So I'll be uh, giving you uh, some resources, including another presentation about writing plot summary um, and plot itself, plot terminology. Uh, and then uh, at least two other presentations about central ideas. So just be on the lookout for those. Well, here we have the paper one directions. And the first thing you want to understand is that you will be writing a plot summary in paper one over one of two stories. You have your choice. You can uh, write your paper one plot summary paper over uh, Sonny's Blues by James Baldwin. Or you can choose a story called Paul's Case by Willa Cather. Uh, both of these are, I think, excellent short stories. Um, they're both kind of long. There are a couple of the more more long stories, short stories that we have in our textbook. Uh, please read them both and choose which one of the two you will focus on for paper number one. I will say that paper number two is actually going to be sort of a continuation of paper number one. Uh, paper number two is going to ask you to write about character and conflict. Uh, as they pertain to the story's central idea. And you will be writing uh, over the same story that you did here in paper one. In fact, paper two is just going to take your paper one material and add on to it. So both paper one and paper two will be over the same story, either Sonny's Blues by James Baldwin or Paul's Case by Willa Cather please do not write about both of those stories, only one of those stories, please. So the first step is really kind of the, the major step. It's going to be the, the step that entails the most writing uh, here in paper number one, and that is writing the plot summary itself. So the way we're going to do this is the first sentence of your plot summary is going to be a one sentence long summary of the entire story. Okay, that sentence of plot summary is going to be quite general. Um, lots of things happen in both the Baldwin and the Cather stories. Uh, and of course, there's no way to capture all of those things in one sentence. So you're going to need to write a sentence that does capture the essence of the plot. Uh, you're going to want to write a sentence that does 
take into consideration the entire story, but again, that's only going to be one sentence long. That's going to be the very first sentence of your essay. This sentence should also include the title of the story as well as the full name of the author. Um, story titles always go in quotes. And the first time that you mention an author's name in an essay, you give the full name. And then ever after in the essay, all you have to do is refer, if you do this, is refer to the author's last name. You would never refer to the author's first name only, but you can refer just to the author's last name. So you might write a sentence, something like Baldwin writes or uh, uh, Cat, uh, Cather uh, writes or something like that. That's the first sentence of the essay. After you write that first sentence, you will then follow it up with a fuller, more detailed, but still relatively short plot summary of the entire story. Okay, like I say, both of these stories uh, by Baldwin and Cather are quite long, you know, they're 20 pages long or so, uh, but you only have about a page and a half, page and three quarters to do this. I'm giving you a certain amount of space in your essay in order to accomplish this task. It can be done, trust me. So after that very first sentence, you will follow up with the solid but short summary of the story's plot. You will mention the names of main characters. You will hit uh, all of the major plot points, including the climax of the story and any important things that happen in the resolution of the story. Uh, you will want to explain any important backstory that's presented at the beginning of the story. Uh, as well as all of the major plot points that occur um, in between. So in this essay, uh, you will be required to use terms as they relate to uh, plot and plot summary. So you will want to take a look at the uh, other presentation I'll provide for you uh, about plot and plot terms and take a look at the the slideshow that I'll post on Blackboard and use those terms in your plot summary. Uh, those terms are going to include things like exposition, backstory, plot points, rising action, tension, climax, falling action, resolution or denouement. Uh, they might include terms like flashback or flash forward or foreshadowing. Those are some of the major terms we use when we refer to plot. You don't have to use all of these terms, and you certainly don't need to use them in every sentence of your plot summary, but I am expecting you to uh, use them uh, meaningfully and uh, you know, try to use a handful of them scattered around your, your plot summary. You, you absolutely do want to identify the climax of the story. That's one thing you will definitely need to do. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and this might be a little tricky in some instances, when we give plot summary, we like to do it in what we call the literary present tense. The idea is that a story is set you know in a certain time and place and it's going to be in the past um, but the story is a work of literature it's a work of art that is still sort of acting upon us uh, as we read it and as we appreciate it uh, to that end we like to use the literary present tense when we give plot summary 
Now, there are some exceptions to that, and I talk about that a little bit in the other presentation about plot. So go ahead and check that out. Make sure to consult the story arc and plot terms document presentation. Uh, we'll talk a little bit in that presentation about strategies for writing plot summaries, good sort of tips to follow, good rules of thumb to follow uh, as you're composing a plot summary. So that will be about a page and a half, a page and three quarters at most uh, of your essay. And of course, your essay will be double spaced with 12 point font. So there will be some formatting restrictions that you also have to deal with. Again, trust me, it can be done. The Baldwin story, the Cather story, even though they're long, can be summarized in that amount of limited space. It can be done. At the end of your essay, when you're done with your plot summary, you will compose a one sentence statement of the story's central idea. And that's sort of step two of your paper assignment. Okay, you will want to thoroughly study the resources I provide for you about central idea. Uh, central idea uh, can be you know, a little, a little tricky if you're not used to, to thinking about stories in this way. Um, basically, a central idea statement is a statement about what the story seems to be portraying about human nature. That's a very uh, sort of general way of explaining it, and I, I get much more detailed about that in the in the presentation material uh, about central idea. So again, make sure to to listen to that and read that and study that as you're putting together your paper one. Uh, you will be writing a central idea statement for uh, pretty much all of the stories that you will be writing about this this summer. Um, you'll be doing that in the departmental exam as well. So uh, being able to compose a central idea statement is going to be a very important skill that you want to practice uh, and you want to start practicing that as soon as you can. The final requirement of paper number one is to compose a works cited page. Now there will only be one source on that works cited page and that will be the story itself, either the Baldwin story or the Cather story. Um, I will be providing you some information about how to cite a digital textbook on the Blackboard platform. So there's a lot of uh, sort of special things about our textbook that we need to take into consideration as we're composing the works cited entry for this. Uh, hopefully you remember some of this from Comp 1 or maybe some other class where you studied MLA citation. Uh, I'm not going to grade your works cited page uh, for paper one. I just want to see what you can do and I'll give you comments on it, you know, when I return the paper to you um, and we'll sort of grade it for, for paper number two. Um, in other words, I won't, in paper one, I won't consider uh, problems with your works cited entry, I won't consider that against you when I'm deciding upon the final grade for your, your first paper. Uh, you do not need to do any sort of in-text citation um, in this paper. You will be doing it in other papers. And like I say, you will want to be um, formatting the paper as well as all of your papers correctly uh, according to MLA formatting guidelines and there will be a presentation about that for your uh, perusal as well. So the last thing I'll say to wrap up is that, um, you know, this first paper is our uh, sort of first foray into what we call formalism. I talk a little bit about formalism in the central idea material. Formalism is a um, literary theory. It is a, uh, lens or a method that we use to uh, approach literature, including short stories. Um, it provides us with a set of 
uh, sort of terms and concepts and guidelines for how to approach a short story. And one of the ways that formalism works is by identifying things like central ideas and linking um, elements of story to them uh, and, and sort of making those connections clear. And that's what we're going to be doing um, starting certainly in paper number two. Finally, the last thing I'll say is that formalism, one of the central tenets of formalism, says that we do not need to uh, know anything about the author or the author's life or the author's life and times really in order to appreciate and analyze a short story. Um, all we need is the story and a basic understanding of certain terms. Um, I don't want you going to the web or some other resource in order to read a plot summary of these stories. You know, both of these stories are very famous stories and they've been written about, you know, all day, all for, for decades, you know, people have been writing about these stories. They're so famous. So, of course, there's going to be all kinds of uh, plot summaries and analysis papers out there about these stories. Um, you know, I don't really want you to go hunting for those. I want you to try to write this plot summary uh, by yourself. Um, you will ultimately be working with stories that are more recent that really haven't been written about uh, and you'll want to you know practice plot summary as well as analysis with those stories so you know i don't want you to get used to going to some sort of web-based resource in order to find out about the plot of a story uh, here at the end of the paper one assignment uh, i give you a little bit of information and a link about uh, what we call content farms these are basically uh, websites that sort of collect uh, information about uh, stories and poems and novels and whatnot and they sort of condense it and sometimes they offer it for free sometimes they try to sell it to students um, these content farms tend to be pretty low quality they don't always tend to be correct uh, and most importantly the plagiarism checker software that we will be using this summer uh, will be able to catch those things. So if you use material from one of these websites, uh, I'll be able to, to see that. And that, that's, that's not a place that you want to be in, right? We, we said in our policy statement material that plagiarism, where you rip something off from a, a website and slap it into your own essay, um, that's, that's plagiarism. That's something that you can't really get away with in college. Uh, that's something that can get you kicked out of school, in fact. So try to avoid those content farms. Try to avoid those web-based resources in particular. Uh, if you need help with your essay, um, ask, ask for help. Okay, Talk to me. Uh, set up an appointment with me. Work with a writing tutor online. Uh, that's our job is to help you uh, with these essays. All right, so good luck. Let me know if you have any questions about uh, paper number one. And I look forward to reading what you got.